Hello, folks. Oh, I'm so happy that you've joined us today. Miigwech for being here. My name is Aria Evans. I am the Metcalf Artistic Director intern here at Soul Pepper Theater. And this is our community conversation. We're situated in Duggarondo, which is known as the gathering place on Dish With One Spoon territory. And this community conversation is in celebration of where the blood mixes, and it investigates the power of water. Community conversations are going to be happening all season long in tandem to each of our shows. And the next community conversation is on July 11th. It is in celebration of Kamloopa, and it brings together a group of indigenous femmes who are breaking stereotypes through their work. And I just want to say that community conversations cannot be made possible without the support of TD Ready Commitment. So thank you to them. All right. So the title of Where the Blood Mixes comes from the place where the Thompson River and the Fraser Mi River meet, known as Kamshin, also known as Lytton, BC, where Kevin Loring, the playwright, is from. And this time last year, following three consecutive days of the hottest temperatures ever recorded in Canada, the town of Lytton, the Lytton First Nation, and the surrounding area burnt to the ground in a wildfire. And for me, this makes this conversation, the power of water, even more present. We have an inspiring group <laughs> of folks here to dive deeper into this topic, and it is my pleasure to welcome them. Yeah, give them a round of applause. I would love for each of you to introduce yourself, however makes sense for you today. And Pauline, I'm going to start with you. Well, I want to say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. And uh, I just want to uh, say good afternoon to our littlest, littlest, uh, you know, uh, person in here. She's uh, her mother. I know her family, but her her uh, her mother said she's a she's a pandemic baby. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great that you know she brought us this healing together, this gathering together, and and uh, I just want to say uh, miigwech for the invitation that that I you know that you uh, asked me to come in here and speak about the water. That's my one of my favorite 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 topics, and you know, and uh, because. Uh, my name is Anemki Kwe, and that means Thunder Woman. And uh, being Thunder Woman, we are part of the uh, part of the you know the water, okay? And we are in charge of the you know in the western in the western uh, way, not the western way, the western doorway. We are in charge of the you know the storms and everything else, okay? You know, so uh, and. Uh, I was uh, I was given that name be, uh, from my parents because I was born on July 13th, 1943, on the one of the worst storms they said, you know, in in Alberta. That's where I am from. So I am a Nimki Kwe and the Gavana Saint and I am uh, of the uh, Red Tail Hawk Clan. So. Uh, so I am originally from Alberta, and but I've been here since the 60s, and uh, I raised my family here, and uh, I just love it here. You know, I came in here seeking, 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 uh, you know, answers to things I couldn't, I couldn't. I was born, you know, uh, raised, born and raised on the reserve in a traditional way, and I speak my language fluently, which is Plains Cree, and I uh, was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, schooled in the in a residential school, Blue Coast School in Alberta, which is uh, my band has, uh, you know, uh, went into a university. So I have five beautiful children that were loaned to me by the creator and 13 grandchildren and seven greats, great greats, okay? So I, re I really feel rich, okay? Very, very rich. And uh, I, I run a school called uh, Pipamachakwe, which means thunder, I mean, and which means wandering spirit here in Toronto. And it's the first native control school in Canada, you know, run by our people. And so 
that's one of my pride and joy. And I mean, I can tell you about these stories about that. But I love Toronto, and I'm always so busy. I used, normally do not carry notes, okay? But because you know this this uh, moon time, it's a you know it's a really busy moon time, you know, because uh, you know Ode Min, you know Gisus, she's so busy. People have keep are keeping us so busy, and we're so busy because you know. Our lives are so interesting, they're so beautiful, they're just amazing. We have amazing stories to, to share with people. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Okay, miigwech. <laughs> miigwech, Pauline. And Jani, I'd love to pass it to you if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, it's lovely to see everybody here today. Uh, my name is Jani Lozon. Notin giwet negri dishnakos, makwadodem. I'm uh, the director of Where the Blood Mixes, and I am um, <coughs> really excited about this conversation. Miigwech, and Eve, on to you. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Eve Saint, and I am a uh, Wet'suwet'en land defender. Um, my father is one of the hereditary chief, uh, Chief Was, out in Wet'suwet'en territories. Uh, right now, they are standing up against a uh, pipeline, coastal gas link uh, pipeline. So me and my family, uh, we stand up and do that work out west. And uh, this is Cassia. And she is actually named after the territory that my father uh, governs. Um, it means uh, Grizzly House. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, glad to be here. And um, thank you. Miigwech, Eve. Kevin, over to you. Kukstam, thank you. Uh, Kevin Loring Hanschquesh. Uh, and Jawa and Tlakapmach, and Shaken Mechamten Mechamten. I'm in Tlakapmach from uh, Lipton, British Columbia, as Arya mentioned. Uh, my family comes from a place called uh, Mechamten, which means many snakes, because there are. <laughs> we call it Snake Flat. And I'm the playwright of uh, Where the Blood Mixes, and I'm also the artistic director of Indigenous Theatre at the National Arts Centre of Canada. And I'm also the artistic director of Savage Society out in British Columbia. So Cook stay up. Thank you for all for being here and thank you for inviting me. I just feel so honored to have this group of humans joining me and the power of water. I wanted to start off by asking you, Jani, to start with the play, to start where where the blood mixes and your journey deciding how you wanted to bring it to life. For me, it was so beautiful to see how you wove the themes of water into the dramaturgy, into the set design. And I will say, if you're curious about the designers, I highly encourage you to look up their work. There were some really, really incredible, beautiful collaborations that happened to make this piece come to life. But Jani, can you speak to how water was central for you in directing this play? Um, <clears throat> absolutely. So uh, it's embedded in Kevin's writing, for sure. Uh, I responded to what was on the page. I also responded to, because uh, I like to talk to the writers <clears throat> prior to directing their work, just to have a conversation. And Kevin and I had a conversation early on, and I was really struck with something that you said, Kevin, about, you know, this is really um, uh, a play about characters who are, and people who are uh, trying to, c to come up for air. And I <clears throat> and I, I love that metaphor. I think it's really, really important because it is, I see the play really as about a play about re resilience and resistance. And also the more that I talk to people, the more that I uh, watched videos of sturgeons, which are just incredible. <laughs> like these really big 16 footers are unbelievable. They're just unbelievable. And that they're bottom feeders and that, and that really moving, um, speech that Mooch has about his con he's contemplating he's really contemplating what's what's down there and I, and I, it was the central piece for the play for me was that that piece of text and so um so the the design and all of the work was really around the idea of submerged and emerging for me but i'm also i'm I've been fascinated by the idea that water has memory and that and these a lot of the teachings that I've been given as well that water holds memory and you know two two years ago I remember reading an article on the 
on the internet about this, that scientists have just discovered this. <laughs> I just laughed. And, um, and also just really, really moved by the water walkers, the women who are really trying to save us all. And the fact that the power of theater and the power of Kevin's play allows us to really look at <coughs> not only metaphorically the importance of water, but let's dive deeper into um, how important and remind ourselves how important it is for us, not, <coughs> uh, not only because it holds memory and that we need to go back to some of the original teachings, but also that we all need water to survive. So I was, um, and you know, it's just, I remember in the 80s, I drove through Lytton and uh, I didn't stay very long. I was on my way to many music festivals <laughs> in, my, in my youth. Um, but just the power of those two rivers coming together is just something that um, it's, it's really, really incredible to see, so. Yeah, thank you for that reminder that water holds memory. I think about that often as we walk every day through this world. And I'm really glad that you brought up the metaphors that exist inside of this play, because Kevin, that was something that really struck me when I first read the play and then when I saw Jani, your interpretation of it. And it's clear, like, how the sturgeon were a lifeline for these characters and also for your community? And this is a big question, but I'm hoping you could speak to where you think this nation is at in terms of land and water protection and where we as a society could place our focus to be in better relationship. Well, that's a really big question. Um, yeah, we can break it down. Mm, well, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. I, I, I saw the David Suzuki piece uh, at the opening of Luminado Festival a couple days ago, <clears throat> and they talked about the battles that they fought over the years. And they, they spent a lot of time actually in my community in Lytton in the 80s fighting the Stein Valley logging, um, and they were able to save the Stein. Um, and the, the First Nation, that my, my band, the Lytton Band, is now the custodian of the Stein Valley watershed. It's a federal park, which is complicated because then that means it's now out of our sovereignty. It's now owned by the, pro like the, the feds, uh, but we administer it, but we saved it, and that's important. Um, but uh, it was interesting to hear them talk about the battles that they fought uh, stopping these damming, the dams for hydroelectric power um, that also destroy lands and block rivers and there used to be a uh, there used to be a kind of salmon on the west coast they called the portland pig uh and it was they were so they're like king salmon but they're ginormous they're like the size of a human being and they're practically extinct now because of all of the hydro dams along the pacific uh, all the way up and down uh and you know there's these massive 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 salmon they were like a huge part of our of our traditional life and still are and the salmon still are very much the center of our of our existence as indigenous people over there in british columbia and so when you dam these rivers and you 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 create these you know what's called green energy you're actually destroying ecosystems you're actually destroying land you're actually uh displacing indigenous communities from their traditional territory and so it's really complex. Like, how do you, like, we, we live in a really complex time where um, we are wanting to move away <clears throat> from, you know, fossil fuels and get into more renewable sources of energy, but in doing so, we are still destroying. And so how do we, how do we, and the, and the way that we do dams, it just, it's so, it has to always be so epic. It has to be like, we have to stop the river and then re divert it and then make power. There has to be better ways of doing that um, because I think that it is important um, to, to utilize the, the available renewable energy, but at the same time, we have to do it in a way that includes everybody's uh, values and and uh, uh, you know their being, you know. And so it's I don't know, it's hard to it's really complex. And so uh, we're in a we're in a really challenging time that needs really challenge like we need to really face those challenges head on in a really intelligent and, and forward thinking way. Yeah, I agree. And that's a great segue, Eve. <laughs> I know that you're a land defender, 
and you're an integral part of protecting the water and the land that Canada is occupying, and you're also a mother. <laughs> and my question to you is, what drives you in taking on that responsibility in ensuring that the next generations have access to a healthy planet? Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, um, I felt like a big, strong like pull um, to uh, do the work that I do. Um, there's not a lot of people that do or are, are out there. So uh, I was actually in uh, theater school. I was at a Center for Indigenous Theater. Um, I did, I was on my fourth year and um, I, I let them know that um, activism is my first passion. Um, that's uh, why I'm here in school. I'm trying to utilize school. And um, so they knew that. And so um, when I went out visiting my dad in Wet'suwet'en territories, we had just gotten word that uh, Coastal Gasling had got a permanent injunction. And uh, this was uh, in 2019. <laughs> 2019, and so I knew that um, that this permanent injunction it was the final. It's the final, uh, I guess, um, a step into uh, c completing. Oh, baby, completing the uh, coastal uh, the pipeline. And so anyway, um, I knew that I had to make a quick decision. Um, to leave my life in Toronto, to leave school, to leave my apartment, to leave uh, the life that I knew. And I uh, gave up that sacrifice. Uh, I mean, I, I made that sacrifice and I went to the front line and uh, stood with my people. And so uh, I was one of the four arrested uh, February 7th, 2020. Um, me and four unarmed uh, other indigenous land defenders uh, stood our ground while a hundred militarized RCMP came in and tore me off my territory. At gunpoint, we had snipers coming around us. We had helicopters uh, dropping, like tack teams, and um, it was something out of a movie. Like this is surreal, and this is what Indigenous land defenders go through. Right, so um, you see the people still out there doing the work. Um, I stood my uh, ground with Gidim Den Checkpoint, and they are still out there, still defending the, their land. Uh, they're defending the Wudzinkwa River. Uh, that river is uh, so pristine, it's so beautiful. Like, uh, when every time I go out to camp, we uh, drink the water from the river, and um, it's so um, alive with minerals and you can you can taste it it's so beautiful it tastes like crystal and um so um just before the raid happened on um Gidim Den, um i found out i was pregnant with her and um i i was like oh my god so i was faced with a difficult decision right because what pregnant mother wants to be out there and face that colonial violence and so I put myself in the future where she, you know, I, I would be like, what would you have want me to do? Would you have want me to leave or would you have want me to stay? And I know um, creator put her in my life to be a warrior. And so I know that she would have been like, I would have wanted you to stand your ground. So, and we're not just thinking about like mine and her life, we're thinking about generations. We have um, in the interior of British Columbia, Highway 16, and it's all industry like towns. And so a lot of missing and uh, missing murdered indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, and, and men, they go missing thousands. And so if this pipeline is built, then that number goes up along with the destruction of the water, destruction of um, our identity. Because now, because of that injunction, I can't move freely on my lands without p police harassment. And um, the, uh, the salmon that was mentioned, right? We're salmon people out west, right? Like that goes down too, the numbers go down. Um, so there's a lot at stake. So when I got arrested, 
um, I thought, you know, genocide, genocide was just echoing through my mind. And I, I cried, and I just sang the woman warrior song. And, um, <laughs> sorry, it's a little emotional. <laughs> so that's why I had to make that stand. No indigenous mother wants to be there. And, you know, but I, I had to. I had to. And, um, you know, um, I knew that, like, I had to uh, do, like, as soon as they came in, you know, they told me, they're like, okay, you have to go, you have to go. I didn't say anything. I just sat there because we were on the bus. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar, but we were on the bus. Uh, there was a bus kind of in the way. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. But anyway, um, so as soon as they came in the bus and told me to leave, I didn't say anything. But then as soon as they touched me, I'm like, okay, I'm going. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm obviously not going to fight or struggle, right? Like, I don't want to you know, uh, have the risk of being tasered or, you know, violently um, forced to leave. Um, but anyway, so that's why I do it. I do it for a, a lot of number of reasons. Um, so, you know, now I have two, two beautiful babies and um, also their father too does this work. So I don't know if, if any of you follow it, but um, this past year uh, there was a, um, video of a Haudenosh the Haudenosaunee. Um, that was my partner who bounced the RCMP out of the territory, who was like, this is the land of Chief Was, leave! Like, that sent chills. That's her father. And so we have that connection between Wet'suwet'en and Haudenosaunee, and uh, that was his action. So uh, he was doing that, making that stand uh, for for my dad and for uh, our children. So, yeah, I just want to, I'll, I'll pass it on, <laughs> but thank you. No, thank you for your words and really presencing the reality of what it takes and what it costs to be involved in that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's so important to think intergenerationally and to look at like the the generations after not even just our generation that's something that really resonates with me and Pauline inside of this idea of generations when you were introducing yourself you mentioned you're Thunderbird woman but you're also water clan can you share what that means and what responsibility that has in a larger clan system well first of all I belong. I, I want to say. Uh, I want to give my uh, my uh, greetings to uh, Lake Ontario. You know, Lake Ontario is one of our uh, is one of our grandmothers. You know, and we have four great grandmothers in the in the universe. That's the you know the 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 water, the salt water, the clean water, and the, the Thunderbird. You know, the Thunderbirds and all that, and uh, also the uh, you know the water that we have. Uh, you know, within within our areas. So uh, what I'd like to say is that I belong to uh, a beautiful uh, family, and it's called the Three Fighters Society. And in that Three Fighters Society, uh, we have uh, what we call Medawadikwe, which is the water, the water clan society. And our responsibility as responsibilities as women and as grandmothers is to to take care of that water line. Okay, I have. Uh, I am the head of the uh, the head of uh, you know of my family, and then there's my daughter, you know, who's th who's the uh, third degree, and also my my granddaughter, who's the uh, you know second degree, and she is the she carry we carry the water line, we carry the stories of uh, the 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 water from the creation story to now how we take care of it, and and how we uh, you know. What are the names of all the uh, of all the uh, the waters in the world, and how do they uh, service us? How do we take care of them? So, and what is our interconnectedness in there? So everything, everything starts from the creation story. Everything. That's where we get our curriculum from. But uh, you know, when we uh, say nipi, that that means water. That water is in each and every one of us 
That's what you know connects us to our mother, the earth. And that's how the beginning of the story, the story is. So I, my responsibility as a Bedouinique is that to tell the story, the true story of what water is all about. And also to always stand up and have water and, and make a, you know, a, talk to her, bless her, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and we, and we uh, offer it to, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the universe three times. And, uh, you know, all the levels of the water levels, all the levels of the earth. And that's it. So we honor that. And then what we talk about is that how, what is our connectedness with water? Who are we? What is my responsibility? What sh how shall I take care of that water? We do not have, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we don't have uh, in, our, in, our, uh, in our society is water bottles. You know, we do not, we do not, uh, you know, uh, capture that water, make it a prisoner in that, in that, in that, uh, in that, like what Indian Affairs is doing to our people here, you know. So we, it has to be free, it has to be cleaned, it has to be talked to, it has to be shared, it has to be sung to, and all that. So we sing, we have water songs. They're so beautiful. We have eight water songs in, a, in, a, in our society, and it's us women who, who uh, carry those uh, water vessels. And the water vessel, the water vessel is made out of uh, copper. And the reason why it comes from the, uh, the reason why we're using the, the copper is because it comes from the creation story. When they were looking for the water, where to place the water bundle, where they're going to place the, you know, the life, the creator and, you know, the creator and all the grandmothers, they came upon, upon uh, nine planets. And one of the planets was, was, uh, was uh, the, uh, the copper. So the copper, you know, when you, went to visit, when you go visit somebody, they always say, they always give you a gift. So the, the copper said, here, you could use this. And that's why, as you know yourself, the, uh, the essence of that copper is so pure, it's so, it's so beautiful, it's so healing. That's why we, we carry these little things, these water cups all over. Everywhere I go, I always have this. Because we never know when we need to offer and bless that water and bless that water because we never know if somebody is sick, you know. We bless that water and give it to them. We never know when we're going to be planting. We never know when we need to protect that water. So, you know, what with our little auntie here about the protection of water, you know, that's, you know, I, you know, I give her a lot of, uh, you know, credit for doing that, but also, I'm also a water walker. And the water walker, being a water walker is, uh, I traveled uh, uh, 200 and 298 miles. And I have a, f a foot here uh, that, you know, that was, uh, that, that came from the resident, when I was resi in residential school, you know, I was thrown off the, uh, the, the stairs by a nun. And, uh, but I forgave her, I forgave her, you know. So, so I, you know, I'm alive, you know. And, uh, but we, you know, we are, you know, we have to, uh, we have to say, uh, you know, uh, say, we have to lift up our water and say, give it thanks and offer it in all to the world, you know, and healing. So every, any time we uh, have a ceremony, the woman get up and they, uh, and we have water vessels the, and the, uh, the grandmothers speak to the water, and then the, the young woman, they uh, bring it to everybody to, uh, to drink that blessed water so they can heal themselves. So it's a really, it's a really, really, really important ceremony. And uh, uh, we're going to be having our bidet ceremonies in uh, uh, next, next, in two weeks' time in... Um, in London, and uh, and I, you know, if ever 
If ever you want to come to a Bedouin ceremony, Three Fires Society, you're welcome to come and uh, be with us. Share that beautiful water. Share it, protect it, learn how to protect it, and learn how to uh, speak to it and to sing to it. So we are a very sharing society, you know? So, you know, that's what the, uh, the Water Clan is all about. The Mede Wana Kwe. So um, that's what does, you know, I always introduce myself as a Mede Wana Kwe because I am part of the Water Clan. It is my responsibility to go to any water. Anytime I see water, I go and offer it Sema. And that means tobacco. That means tobacco is what our spiritual connection from the physical to, uh, to the spiritual level. And we speak to that, and we speak to that spirit, and we say to that water, welcome, grandma, you know? And uh, we bless it, and we say, thank you for making us alive, because, you know, that's all we are, you know, we're all, our bodies are full of water. So there's so many, many teachings that, that we can, uh, that I can sh share with you, you know? So many, but it's just, as I'll, I'll, I'll just cap it together, okay? So I just want to say miigwech for listening and also, you know, coming to, uh, coming to uh, hear all these, uh, all these friends, great friends, you know, and, uh, and also remember, you are water, you are sacred, you are blessed. You, you have that responsibility, each and every one of you, to take care of that water. We need to take care of her. She is, she is asking us so much, you know. She is asking us, go visit her. Go talk to Lake uh, Ontario, because she's lonely. Go and feed her, you know, do that. Do that to her, and she'll be so happy, and you'll see, feel so, so, so rich and so, uh, and so well. So, miigwech. I also just want to say miigwech for that offer to come join you for those ceremonies. That's really generous. And the reminder to sing and to speak to your water speaks so truly to me. I think it's something in our, our day-to-day lives that we, we can do, we can give our gratitude, we can express that relationship that nurtures us, that is all of who we are, truly made up of water. I would love to bring it back to the work for a moment. And so Kevin and Jani, this is a, a question for the two of you. We've talked about the, the on the land ways of engaging with water protection, with land protection. How do you think art plays a role in contributing to social change? I think that it plays an important role. I think that, um, I, I, I see this, all, I work in Ottawa now, so I see this all the time. But uh, you see uh, politicians give a speech or there's a gathering of leaders and they pontificate to each other. <clears throat> and it can kind of go over people's heads and it can kind of miss them. But art has the power of doing is transforming the way that you feel about something. It, tra it reaches into your heart <clears throat> and through, through, the, through, the, through the work, it sort of passes through the intellect and reaches into the spirit of the matter. And I think that, that is, uh, that's where actual transformation occurs within people. Uh, you can change people's ideas, but when you change somebody's feelings about something, where they can't escape the feeling um, it has a different kind of alchemical kind of sort of effect on the on their psyche and on their worldview, and that kind of uh, that kind of change is is why we're drawn to art. You know, when we go and you, you see it when you know I, I always think of like uh, speaking of like water keepers, but like Daphne Ojig's work. Uh, I think of her paintings. I, I find those paintings work on me on a on a on a vibrational level. If I see an amazing dance piece, uh, it, 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 it takes my mind on like a journey. And I see a piece of theater and it rest, it's wrestling with like really difficult truths or uh, making fun of something. Um, I have a play uh, that we, I recently just uh, directed and wrote. I mean, it took me 20 years to write it, but I, I directed it uh, just recently. But it, it makes fun of everything. 
Uh, and that has the power to change people's perception. Um, that's the very, that's the important sacred clown, that Hayoka kind of work, where you, you turn everything upside down and on its ass and, and uh, see what, what comes out of that. And, uh, and that's a lot of fun, but it's transformative work because it gives you a different perspective on the world that you're in. And so I think it's vital. I think that the art plays a vital role in that work. Jani, do you have anything you'd like to add? I'll just digress for just a minute. <clears throat> um, I don't know what prompted me to sign up for the garage sale, street sale this morning, but I did. Uh, but my young neighbor, who is uh, just probably right now in her very first production of oh, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, uh, <clears throat> is happening this afternoon at the Winchester Street Theater, and her mom came over and said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I don't know how to be a mom of an artist and an, and a, and an actor. So maybe you could talk to my daughter. So her daughter came over and I said, it's so great that you're a storyteller. And she said, what? And I said, well, that's what being an actor really is, right? That's what being a writer really is, is you're a storyteller. And she went, oh, yeah. Like I could s see your brain go like that. And, you know, I think, I think what's really, really important to me is that, and certainly what I've been taught and, 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 things that have been shared with me is that um, <clears throat> in a, a lot of indigenous languages there is no word for actor or artist. It's the very nature that we're human beings means that we're creative. The very nature that we're living this life means that we are living creatively. And, um, and that storytellers are the key <laughs> to <laughs> holding memory, to sharing memory, to teaching, to like just uh, the, the pinpoint of, of, s of so many things spin off from that. And I, um, and I hope that we can get back to realizing that storytellers are essential, that art is a part of what that is uh, by the nature of extension of that, and that, um, that we're all artists. There is no separation. We're just, we're human beings that should all be creatively expressing ourselves. Um, but the story, the power of storytelling from, you know, the the amount of stories that I read to my daughter and who's, you know, now up on stage uh, is that connection to me. It's really the power of, of just um, sharing knowledge through storytelling and, and the magic that happens when you do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. I should probably wrap up, but um, I just think that I'm just hoping that society comes back to uh, recognizing the importance of storytelling and recognizing that we are all artists. The thing that always strikes me when I go see a play or a dance show or listen to music is how you get to look at something differently through somebody else's eyes, and there's nothing else that quite does it like the power of storytelling in theater in this way. As a last thought, this is open to anyone who would like to offer some thoughts, is if we were to walk away from this conversation with one action in mind, what might that be for you? I'm going to take away the reminder to speak, to speak and sing to the water. But I'd love to hear from other folks. Um, I think um, a takeaway action uh, that we can do, um, I believe that we're in a climate crisis right now. It's a very, very crucial uh, time. Um, if we're all paying attention to all the natural disasters happening out west and in the states and across the world, really, um, I think, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, one thing that we can do is uh, come together more and, um, you know, whatever uh, you can do, whether it's you've got resources or even share your knowledge, like educate other people because there's a small number of people that um, 
that are active or um, even believe about it. I think, uh, you know, if you can get out there, if you can get out to rallies or um, even events like this, like this is a great conversation. Um, yeah, just to kind of be active and, you know, maybe uh, set goals like, oh, what can I do? Maybe I can go to an event this month or something. Or maybe I can talk to like Uncle Bob about, <laughs> you know, the climate crisis. And because it's, you know, it's good to also back indigenous communities because it's a uh, uh, going through our territories. Industry is going through our territories. So if you're able to like uh, stand behind like with Suetin or uh, Suquamic uh, land defenders or any, any um, nation that are standing up against industry, like, you know, it's our communities that are being affected. We don't have clean water, right? So, and it's gonna, it's gonna, who knows what's gonna happen in the next five years. So that's what I would say. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I'll, uh, I, I wanna tell you a little story, short little story. As a little girl, I grew up on a farm, on a beautiful farm. My father was a very successful farmer in, uh, in Alberta. And, uh, and I remember, you know, you know, in, in Alberta, you know, the rains just come and come and come. And, uh, and I remember uh, I, was, I was about seven years, seven years old and uh, I was running. I had my rubber boots on and after this rain and I wanted to meet my father in the barn, you know, from the house to the barn. And there was a big hill in there and there was, I saw this little, this water, you know, just, you know, a little river. And I said, oh my God, I says, I want to try that. I'm going to run. I took my boots off and I ran. And the most beautiful, beautiful feeling came over me. And I knew that it was me. I knew that water was me. I just loved myself. And I said, even as a little girl, I knew that it was me. And I said, I said, I hi, hi, hi to that water. I was so blessed. I was so, I felt so beautiful, you know, running through that water. And I'll, I will never, never, never forget that, you know, that feeling, that feeling of togetherness, that feeling of interconnectedness, you know, because we are connected, you know. So, you know, and it, I just thought, wow, I'm going to share this, share this. Uh, so every, every year, every time I, I talk about water, I always tell that story, you know, our, our, our connection, our connection with the earth, our connection with ourselves, the earth, and, you know, so that's how, that's how the water is pure. The water is pure. She's pure, and our mother is beautiful. She's, uh, you know, she's, uh, uh, it's us that need to do our work. It's us. It's our mindsets, you know. We really have to really be careful on how our minds think, you know, and what we teach and how we talk to each other. Really have to be very, very careful with that. So that's why I always say, you know, hey, you know, let's, uh, let's be, uh, you know, let's offer our tobacco and give thanks. Give thanks to everything, to everything in life, you know. And, uh, you know, the scientists say they have found pockets of water in the in their space, you know. So, you know, that's, uh, it's all over. It's all over. The water is all over. The wa you know, we're so blessed with water. So blessed, you know. So I always think, you know, and the water will survive. The water will you know how to protect it. You know, I see a lot of, uh, you know, people my age, and you know, you are the teachers. You are the carriers of the, you know, the water teachers, okay? So carry that, you know, carry that, nurture that, you know, talk to people. And, and I want to encourage you, you know, to, uh, to be the, you know, you are the greatest teachers. We are the greatest teachers on earth, you know, because, you know, we are women. The water is in us, we purify, it, you know, everything and nurture and nourish everything, you know. Right now, a friend of mine is having a, is having a, you know, uh, she's about the seventh time that she wants to, you know, to try at having a baby. Before she couldn't do it. Now, we helped each other in the best way as I can. I tried to help her. Now she's, you know, the baby's coming. Could be here. I, I, I think the baby's coming early about uh, 
before midnight tonight, you know? And, uh, you know, and that's what, and that's what we all have to help each other with that, you know? You know, our pain and, and our, our, our beauty, the happiness and all that, you know? Life is so beautiful, life is so sacred. You, each and every one of you, you're so sacred. You know, all of you, all of you. And I see that sacredness. And that's why you came in here and to listen, to listen. But you have the answers within yourself, you know? All within yourself. You just have to, you just have to, uh, you know, uh, bring it out, share it, share it here with that, with your beautiful voices and your beautiful stories. And so I want to say miigwech to these beautiful storytellers that are here, you know? And uh, I'm just so honored to be, to, be, to be here with you. So, and I just want to encourage you Go and to your nearest clear water, talk to it, offer it medicine, offer medicine to it, nourish it, you know. And you know, our future, that's our future. Our future is our children. That's why this little one was here. You know, she offered tears. Those tears are healing, you know. And uh, so I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful to be here sitting with you and what happened with her i don't know what happened with her <laughs> but she's gone but she's uh you know, i think for a walk reminding yeah us, reminding <laughs> us that she is the one that we have to uh hopes <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> she's reminding us you know that who we are of who we are where we are going because it is uh, it is she is the light that's where we're that's where you know we are the teachers and we have to, uh, you know, we are the seventh fire teachers, okay? You are the seventh fire teacher. The seventh fire started in the 70s, you know? I'm, uh, I'm going to be 79, so, you know, that's a long time. That's a long time, you know? So, uh, so I just want to share that with you, all my friends in here, you know? My new friends, you know? And I share my love with each and every one of you. Because you are water. We are relatives. Okay? Miigwech. Hi, hi. With that, I have no more words that I can say that are more meaningful and like grounded in, in this moment. I did want to take a moment. I'll put up some resources on the slide in a moment. But with the thoughts of the thousands of folks from Lytton who lost their homes and their community, rebuilding and recovering is going to take time. If you do have the means to contribute, the Lytton First Nations rebuilding efforts are accepting donations. I'll put up a link on the projector in a moment. And if you're looking to educate yourself further on this content, you can join the First Peoples Law newsletter. Again, I'll put it up in a moment. They report on where the conflicts areas are across the nation in relationship to land stewardship. I just want to present the tiny house warriors who are a part of a mission to stop the Trans Mountain Pipeline, crossing unceded territory. It's subtle. And uh, if you're able to make a financial contribution to the Kedemden checkpoint to help defend the land defenders, that will also be felt by the community. And this brings us to the end of our community conversation, The Power of Water. Chi miigwech to you for joining us and a heartfelt thank you to everyone who's shared their words. We <laughs> have a perfect stand-in <laughs> for Eve, <laughs> but it's been a pleasure. It was given to us by a seven-year-old little boy, you know, and she, and he, uh, they said, share it. I want to share this to the world, he said, you know, and uh, so uh, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the law that, the songs that we uh, that we sing, you know, to the world. Okay. What we say, what we're saying is, water. We love you, water. We we thank you. We respect you. Okay. No.
Thanks for listening. Uh, with that.